have her on top of me doing the business and I'm looking out the corner of my eye. Uh, 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 wait a minute. How big is he? Wait. Oh, she is. Take it up. Wait a minute. Hello, black hole. Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, bells. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky would be one of our Renee scarves. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee mm -hmm, of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's keep on talking about this Bobby Womack book, My Story, from 1944 to 2014. Look at this Renee scarf. It's given. What made things worse was she always was talking about how my pickle never seemed to go down. And she was right. I'd just be about to go on stage, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Cleveland, Mr. Bobby Womack, and my pickle would go up. I'd have a swim and come to get out the pool and oh no, there it was, hard again. I thought, dang, what is wrong with me? My pickle always seemed to be ready for action and I had to think about ice cream, anything, until it went down. Paul, one of my commenters. Again, I may not respond to all your comments, but I read all your comments, okay? One of my commenters had pointed out to me, nay, don't forget, he's in his early 20s, right? So I was reminded of this when I'm reading this part right here, because you know, from between the age of, uh, what is that, seven, eight, nine, all the way up until 32, them pickles don't never go down. Up until men basically get on pressure pills, them things never go down. Barbara wasn't having none of that, wait a minute. Okay, because if the pickle is hard all the time, that means when you ain't with me, the pickle is hard. And so they went to the doctor, right? Barbara said to the doctor, is it some kind of shot or pill that you can give him to make that thing go down? Child, that's called soft pill. Uh-huh. That's what they give you when you go to job court and or jail so you can make it stay down. Get down. They sneak that shit in y'all food, miss. So y'all can stay down. Some of that, that stuff don't never work on y'all. Some of y'all just got the issues until y'all get on the pressure pill. And I know you like, Nay, why you keep talking about them men in the pressure pill? Shit, we lose our head once we get on pressure pills. Sure. I mean. Like Barbara was like, put him on a pill, give him a shot or something so that thing can go down. The doctor was like, uh, uh, okay, Barbara, Miss Cook, can you go, or oh, Cook Womack, whatever your name is, can you go out to the lobby right quick so me and Mr. Womack can tie up a couple of things, all right? The doctor said to him, listen to me, Bobby, don't you listen to that cougar. Don't you listen to that barracuda. Ain't nothing wrong with a young man having a hard pickle. Bobby Womack don't know nothing. The only thing he knows is what the cougar is telling him. Fucking Madam Fifi. No, 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 no. Mata Harry. So thankfully, I didn't get those shots, and I kept on at Barbara that I could give her another boy, and soon enough, she was pregnant. It was the one thing I could give her. It was a boy. We called him Vincent too. After the son she had and lost with Sam, Barbara spoiled him rotten. Nothing seemed to change the ill will people felt about me, though. Everyone still saw me as the guy that moved in on Sam's widow. It got so I was always nervous, shell-shocked. I needed something to numb me to all the bullshit. I just didn't know what until I was introduced to the booger sugar. 
Okay, I'd never done drugs, so why not start? I had fear, and I was told booger sugar was comforting. It was, and I needed that. When I took booger sugar, I didn't care what people said about me. I walked up to them and smiled. How you doing, sir? Have yourself a good evening. Booger sugar was my escape. And to up the protection, I started wearing dark glasses. I wanted to be able to see out, but didn't want anyone looking in. If they did, they would have seen a boy half scared to death. I took Booger Sugar with me everywhere I went, and I stayed effed up. I chopped out fat lines like there was no tomorrow. It didn't matter then what people did or said to me. I went to Chicago to perform, and after every song, the audience wouldn't applaud. They would just sit there. The DJ on the bill asked them to give it up for Womack. Nope, they wouldn't. F it. I got my booger sugar to give me a lift. I turned picket onto it, dirty motherfucker. Now, at first I was feeling bad for you, Bobby Womack. Come to find out you done turned the crazy Wilson Pickety onto the booger sugar. That is the worst thing you could do. Because we know the ninja is either bipolar or schizophrenic. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I cannot, uh, you know, diagnose nobody. That's not my degree. But I'm saying we know that ninja at least got an attitude problem. And you want to get somebody with an attitude problem, a um, controlled dangerous substance? Nigga. I turned picket onto it too. I don't know why I did that. He saw me once and said, Bobby, why are you putting that powder up your nose, man? I told him it was how I coped. I said, with cocaine, I can write. I don't fear no man. I don't fear nothing. I don't even feel nothing. Pickett laughed at that. Told me I was weird. A weird mother hunch. We tried it together. This might have been in Memphis when we were up writing some of those songs. We were up for three days straight and Pickett turned to me and said, Bobby, I ain't going to sleep. I ain't tired. I ain't hungry. And all we are doing is writing hits. Let's go and get a whole bunch more of this shiz. I really believed I was giving him something good because it was something that worked for me. But then I heard about him getting busted for coke possession in the early 1990s. And then I didn't feel so I mean, good. I was in my early 20s, but I, I, I mean, but I was a different kind of child. I was definitely clean and sober then. I was scared of drugs because uh, in junior high, uh, shout out to Shaw Junior High School down there in the Shaw District in uh, Washington, D.C. Child, they showed me this movie, scared me to fucking death. I'm telling you, we was in the auditorium, okay? And it was a movie called Stone Cold Junk. So anyway, man, when I tell you one of them scenes, this man, he was shooting Juggy, and I equated all drugs with heroin. I don't know why, okay? They didn't show us just what we could do. Everything was heroin. Man, that man, he had sores all over his body. He was on the toilet, shaking and shivering. He was like, because uh, <laughs> he was getting sick because he had that juggy, right? All I knew, every single drug made you feel that way. Man, I was scared straight. So I did booger sugar for 20 years of my life. Two decades, snub. People would tell me I would be better off without him. What the F did they know? To add to the paranoia, and this brought me all the way down, my brothers were reluctant to be around. They knew the threats were out there against me. They didn't know what to do, but without them, I was totally alone, all by myself. And because my father and mother had been against the marriage, there was no family in my corner. This guy, Gene, was my dealer. He was laying booger sugar on me every day. I was spending $700 a week with Jean on the booger sugar. Barbara took care of the bill. That's strange. That the woman that you with is paying the money for your booger sugar? Is she on the booger sugar? Strange. That makes me think that she wants to keep you sedated and happy. Like as long as he's addicted to the booger sugar and me paying for the booger sugar, then he will always be addicted to me. Control, danger. That's a dangerous bitch right there. I would tell Gene I didn't want it no more. He said, nah, man, here, take it. Then I'd pour it out on the glass coffee table in the lounge, chop out half a dozen killer lines on that smoked glass top and snort most of it before he was at the bottom of the driveway. 
Barbara was always pushing me to record. Barbara was always pushing me to record Gene. I told her the guy couldn't sing. He had no voice, not that I'd heard any. She was adamant. All his life he'd been a dope dealer, but he'd got close to some entertainers, and now he thought he was one. I was using booger sugar and drinking to hide behind what was really happening in my life. But somehow I was still writing songs. Some good, some not so good. But Barbara did me one favor. I had come up with one too. Oh, how I missed my baby. I don't know what got me on to writing that, but Barbara saw it and asked straight, Are you unhappy? I'm not unhappy. Then why would you be singing about, oh, how I miss you? Who do you miss, Bob? I didn't know. Maybe Ernestine. Remember the old lady when he was 12 and she was like 36, something like that? He might be missing, you know, the clothes that Ernestine used to buy him when he was 12. Ooh, he was fucked up. Barbara told me that if I really saw myself as a writer, I had to be true. Meaning that he needed to write from his experiences in life. How about you do that? Stop making up shiz. Your songs will be more poignant if you write from your heart. So from that point on, that's what he did. From that time on, I made a commitment to myself that I would only write about what I had experienced. I gave Barbara credit for that. Write about what it is and what you've seen, she said, and I did. She was also aggravated by what she saw as my boyish ways, Pause. Okay, let me tell you something. When you are an older woman and you're dealing with a younger partner, y'all know my wife is about nine, ten years younger than me. I'm telling you, that's the vid. They're nice to look at. You know what I'm saying? But the vid to it is you're going to have to deal with that immaturity. Okay, my wife ain't, you know, she ain't like in her 20s or nothing like that. But there is a difference in how we look at things in life because there are certain things that she has not experienced being from the suburbs and being about a decade younger than me. Me coming from the hood and being a decade older. Things are different. We think differently. Okay, plus y'all know she a Virgo, so, you know, I don't know what the fuck. Also, Sam cast a long shadow. His presence hung over that marriage. No matter how we looked at it, we had got married right after Sam's death and because of Sam's death. The way I looked at it, it seemed like we never loved each other. Barbara just said, let's get married, and we did. I had nothing else to do. I had no job. I had nothing going. I tried to explain it to her. I said, I didn't do this to hurt Sam. I did it because I thought Sam would appreciate me standing in the way of anything that could go wrong with the family. It's like taking up a fight for your brother. I know, I know some of us are still like Sam ain't shit. He's the dirtiest DDMF in the world, but because he's so young, it's like, I'm not mad at him. Okay, now when he get a little older, like in his 30s, then I'm gonna look at his ass sideways. That made her angry, that I was there for Sam, not her. One night, we were with a couple, Jim and his girlfriend, Pinky. We were hanging at their place, having a drink. Suddenly, Barbara turned and asked if I was hip. It was totally out of the blue, but I figured I was, so I told her, yeah, I'm hip, babe. She asked again, no, really, are you hip? Sure, baby, I'm hip. I hope so, sport. Then she laid it out for me. She wanted to go with this guy, Jim. She said, I want you to switch and be with his girlfriend. I'm surprised. Was I that hip? She thought I was scared. I told her I wasn't. Disappointed, though. Oh, baby. I thought we were going to be husband and wife, not part of a swinging party. What I said was, I just don't know nothing like that. Well, let's just try it one time. So I lay there with the girl Pinky and we're trying to get it on, working some moves, but I couldn't get nothing going. The more she worked on me, the more my pickle stayed hidden. It had disappeared. It just wasn't happening. And across the room, I could see this guy on my wife and I couldn't handle it. Pinky didn't help matters when she announced to the party. I think Bobby is too square. How you going? Oh, what? What? Pause. Pause. Wait a minute. Time out, bitch. Time out. You, you left fielded me, bitch. 
We we going to a party. We thinking we just going to the party to have some drinks with a couple of people. Everybody know what's going on but me. Who knew I'm the guinea pig of the situation, okay? My wife just say to me, are you hip? I would, I, I would just be like, yeah, you know I'm hip. You know what's popping over here, baby. You know how I do things. You know, I, I, you know I'm a Libra. What's up? You know what I'm saying? That's how I would respond. Yeah, you know and then you know, my wife or who, a barber, Marta Harry, say to the Barbie, okay, well, you know, I'm finna go over there with this dude right here, and he get ready to knock me down. Now, while he's knocking me down, I want you to take his girlfriend over there and knock her down. If you ain't ready for it, how you think... A person supposed to feel because number one, I, I know about these parties, right? People go to these type of parties all the time, but but when it come down to these parties, baby, I'm not hip, okay? Now I might be hip in a lot of other ways, but I'm not hip. So you want me to crawl on top of this woman and do my business with her, or have her on top of me doing the business, and I'm looking out the corner of my eye. Ugh. Uh, uh, uh. Wait a minute, how big is he? Wait, oh, she is taking that. Why am I supposed to take this whole situation serious, you know, or, or, or be comfortable with this situation when you hit me out of left field with that? Come on. And then the bitch, Pinky, she like, <laughs> Bobby I ain't hip. He's a square. Baby, I'm a square all day. Okay? I'll be that L7 child. I've been an L7 forever. Thick glasses, reading books since as long as I could remember. Do you hear me? I don't give a fuck. You can call me square. So the girl Pinky then announced to the whole party, Bobby's a square. He can't even get his dingling up. <laughs> Pinky, shut the fuck up. You just mad you ain't get the Bobby D. I told them I couldn't do it. I couldn't handle it. I guess and upped and walked. I headed straight for home. But I wasn't in the place. Two minutes when Barbara came flying in behind me. Remember to like, share the Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com for our Renee scarves. Ooh, ooh. We got one, two, three, four, and I think five, okay? And please remember this. The same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves you babies. Have a good one.